Thank you all for coming. Um, when <clears throat> I approached Miles a few months back about this idea, he had told me about Sasha had uh, approached him on a similar idea. And um, our response as a company was, let's make it happen. The, the wedding industry is, um, as Sasha kind of mentioned, it is a very old school industry. Um, and it is a, a huge industry that's largely overlooked. And it's a, it's a beautiful, creative, and, and amazing environment with a lot of amazing, talented people working in it that's largely overlooked by technology. Um, so, you know, the, the story of our company, it starts 13 years ago, and it, it leads us up to today. Um, 13 years ago, I, I, I started dating this gal who was a wedding planner, and um, since that time, we managed to be married about 500 times. Um, I've got to know 500 grooms and 500 brides and the troubles and trials and tribulations they go through in planning their wedding. And uh, my background was in technology and in marketing and brand development and brand building. And it just is so painful to see that there was nothing really out there in the market that served the needs of the planner or the couples uh, in a way that made planning fun. Um, there were fragmented offerings, there were some amazing tools, but there was nothing that really brought together the essence of what it meant to be a planner or to plan. And so two years ago, we sold a planning business that we were very, very attached to with the intention of never, ever getting involved in the wedding industry ever again. Because um, the stress of brides, the stress of grooms, the stress of planning was re just ridiculous. I had decided I was done with technology and was going to focus solely on consumer products and we were going to have this great life. And a month later, we started working on IO Planner. Um, <laughs> so IO Planner at its core, again, going back to something Sasha said, is one of the challenges with wedding planning is it really is a, a, a full-blown project management effort. You're managing multiple vendors, multiple guests, a venue that's foreign to you, and all these things need a, a home. And on top of all of that, we as a community have evolved. We're, we're no longer the traditional sense of what a wedding was. With social media and technology, we've evolved as people. and We've become personal brands. So it's almost like a merger of two brands. And you want to share the excitement of that. And I know it sounds kind of corny, but there's a reality to that that's painful when you look at how much technology is infused in our lives. Um, and as such, we wanted to create something that made planning better. And not just better from a, a mobile perspective, not just better from a cost perspective, but better from every perspective. Uh, uh, better in the sense that everybody involved in producing an amazing event had a voice, had a place, and had a way to communicate their value proposition to the process. That was the driving force behind IO Planner. I guess I should probably show you IO Planner since so I have two minutes left. Um, <laughs> apologize. So, we look at planning as seven major compartments. Um, everything has a place and a purpose. For those of you who are married already, you flash back on this and you're going to see things in here going, gosh, I wish I had that when I was getting married. Those of you who are currently engaged and going through the process, I'm going to say three tools I guarantee you have some relationship with in the planning process. IELTS Planner aggregates all of those. One is Excel, because it is obviously the quintessential way to organize lists and things of that nature. The other is Pinterest, because every wedding planning starts with a vision, an idea, and inspiration. And Pinterest has seemed to become our global collection of imagery that we are all gravitating towards. The third is a little bit of a reach, um, and it comes into collaboration and sharing. There's a variety of options. Google Docs comes to mind. For those of you who are more in the project management space, Basecamp will probably come to mind. None of them are very wedding-centric. None are sexy. None are fun to use. We wanted to take all three of those and combine them, and that is the core of what IO Planner is. Uh, what I'm showing you right now is our planning dashboard. From the dashboard, you can see every aspect of your planning process. You get a sample of your budget. You get a sample of where you are in the overall process of planning, your guest lists, your calendar, and your inspiration gallery. I'm going to give you a very high level overview of this in uh, 28 seconds. 
Actually, Rob, since you're paying for the space, you can have another couple of minutes. It's mighty wide of you. Thank you, brother. Um, those of you who have planned a wedding, the all-important wedding checklist, it is basically the core of every planning process on every website everywhere. We went about it a little differently. We created a very comprehensive list of, based on our 13 years of experience in planning, we structured it by categories, we structured it by due date, oops, excuse me, by due dates, and we also allowed you to assign these tasks to people because again, the wedding is, there's no such thing as a DIY wedding. Let's just be candid. We use the term DIT regularly because you're doing it together, whether it's with your friends, or your family, it's the vendors you choose, and ideally you're working with a planner if you've got an ounce of IQ in you and you're actually thinking it through because no matter how good of a planner you are or project manager you are or organizer you are, no one wants to work on the day of their wedding. So we're big advocates for working with planners. So the checklist is very comprehensive. It's customizable. You can adjust the view. You can plan by specific categories. Oops, excuse me. You can plan by categories. Not used to working in this environment. Um, you can assign dates. The dates automatically sync to a calendar. You can subscribe the calendar to your Gmail, your iCal. We like to think of the platform as completely interoperable. We want you to plan in your world, not ours. There is no walls in our system. It's a metaphorical term, but we don't require you to live in our, in our system to plan. It should be a part of your daily life and a part of your ecosystem. Um, the calendar we built is a little different. It's linear. You'll see on here it leads all the way up to your wedding day, and it gives you your timeline day of. We'll be providing customized timelines here in the next few weeks where you can assign timelines to individuals in the wedding because every person has their own schedule for day of, whether it be a vendor or your bridesmaids or your, your husband or wife-to-be. Um, one of the things we're really proud of is our design studio. It's something that we most people are using Pinterest for right now. They're collecting something very similar. Uh, we call it our My Faves, but it's your gallery of images. And all these images can then be assigned to individual style guides for specific areas. For example, in this one, uh, just use tents. Any image here in a tents, if you open it up, what we do in our system is we pull out the core colors to help you create a color palette for yourself. You can then assign these colors to individual palettes within your system. Again, I'm going through this really fast and real high level. Um, Christina's in the back and can give you a full-blown demo if you actually want to go through all of the aspects of it. In addition to all of these, we have a palette Color picker, you can actually create custom colors, assign them to specific categories, making ugly shirts here, purple and brown and pink. Um, sorry. Uh, <laughs> it looks good on you, man. I promise. You can then share these. Um, so you can choose different things and assign them to different uh, style guides and share them so that you're getting an apples to apples comparison when you deal with vendors or you deal with your partners. So they know exactly the images you're using for reference and exactly the color palettes you're talking about for reference. So there's nothing lost in translation. One of the biggest frustrations for any bride or any groom is when things get lost in translation and they're asking for something like this and they get something completely different like orange pants or something like that. Um, let's see. Our guest list is, again, a little different than what you see on the average site. We take Excel and kind of think we add steroids to it. You can actually change the view, the way you look at it. You can look at it by parties, by individuals, by guest cards. You can sort by different categories within here to just help you find and manage exactly every aspect about it. Each guest has their own file. Oops, let me pull it up. Hey. Gives you all the information on the individual guest, what guest list they're on, any meal requirements, any travel, any um, yeah, dietary restrictions, if they need wheelchairs, high chairs. Really, you want to be able to accommodate every need of every guest. Still five minutes. I'm going to wrap it up at this next one here. Um, again, managing your vendors, same scenario. The all-important budget. Nobody likes this one. Uh, our budget tracks everything you've spent. That would be the dark green, everything you've committed to the light green. The white is what you have remaining on your budget. Anytime you add a budget item or you add a vendor or a payment, it automatically syncs with your calendar. Everything is synced, so it continually updates itself, so nothing falls through the cracks. That's one of the biggest gripes with all of the planning tools out there. And lastly is the ability to download and print all this. Um, 
Ideally, you want to have an ability to share this information with those who matter. So that's IO Planner in a nutshell. Um, come on back to our booth back there, we'll get our table, and we'll give you a little more comprehensive uh, uh, tour. Thank you for hosting us, Sasha. Thank you for pushing this, and Miles, thank you for uh, letting me pay for it. Does this work? Okay, good. So this is the interactive part of the night. So raise your hands high if you have any questions for Rob. Forgot about that. Yes. How do you monetize? We're a subscription-based service right now. Um, as Sasha alluded to, wedding planning can take anywhere for between 16 to 18 months on the long, on the outside, on the short term, six to eight months. So on a, a individual user scenario, we call it the two latte business model. It's basically $9.99 a month. If you can forego two lattes, you can plan your wedding. Um, and we do it on a monthly basis, no contract. And when you, when you're, if you decide not to renew your contract, your account still stays open, but you just won't have access to all of your planning features. But you'll still be able to play on the site and fave and save and do things in that, in that, uh, on the site if you wanted to. Yes, there is, but it's not something, we're not a freemium model, we don't, we really focus on the premium aspect of things, but we, we've seen cases where people said, I'm done planning, and then a week later they go, oh, no, I want to come back, so we don't want to delete your information, we store it, um, and you have access to it, you can reactivate your account at any time. Great. The look and feel of your website looks a lot um, very traditional as opposed to something like Anti-Bride or DIY Bride. Mm -hmm. It looks like you're going up against Martha Stewart Weddings or Wedding Wire. How do you compare? Who's Martha? <laughs> Sorry, let's just like her. Just kidding. Um, you know, Martha Stewart's amazing. Uh, what she's done in, in different verticals has been really inspiring. Um, Wedding Wire as well. What they've done in their space has been really inspiring. We wanted to create something that was just a very high quality and, and, and have a perceived value and also create a very intuitive user experience. So the, the very traditional look and feel of the, the, the text, the, the, the positioning of the text, the way the images display, it was very well, I mean, it was very thought out. It was, we, we spent a lot of time on that. Um, that was a huge compliment, by the way, kind of uh, including us with those two companies. Um, there are a lot of comp competitors out there. The biggest challenge we have is getting the, the eyes of the newly engaged couples to us. And there's a lot of noise in our space right now. There's probably over 150 new apps, software companies in the marketplace, all promising everything. The way we look at engaging that and winning that, that, that battle of the noise is, is well, two things. One, we sort of democratized the design and the, the construction of our planning tools by engaging planners in the process. And secondly, the content on our site comes from wedding professionals. It's not just sourced randomly by brides. So every piece of content on our site has a, a authenticated resource behind it and other vendors attached to it. That plus the design is, is, is how we hope to kind of position ourselves alongside those. I don't look at anybody as a competitor in a negative sense. I, I think we all have complementary offerings. We do things a little bit differently. And there's room for all of us. There's, you know, it, when you consider the reversal of DOMA last year, there's now 3.4 million weddings annually in the United States alone. If we could take 20% of that market at our peak, we're, uh, we're pretty happy. Yes. And web? Everybody's mobile and web now. We're cloud-based. Okay. So, so um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so you have an app? We have one coming out. It's in, a, it's in the works right now. Okay. Um, so I say yes because in my mind it's already done. It's just not completed yet. And how are you acquiring users on the individual platform? Rapidly. No. Through word of mouth, or are you <laughs> paying for them? Uh, we don't. I, everybody pays for users, no matter. I mean, if you factor in the marketing costs and, and the, the customer acquisition cost, if you really factor in every aspect of what you do on a daily basis, there's a cost to every user. It's just how you want to allocate that cost. Um, right now, we've been really working on, on, on refining the product and how we serve the product. Our acquisition of customers has ironically been secondary at the moment. 
I, I'm more interested in what the behavior is of our current client base than getting new clients. I want to make sure that we're serving them properly and we're making sure that every experience they have is, is beyond 100% and that they become our evangelists in the field. Um, we live, eat, and breathe the wedding industry. We've been in it for you know, 13 years and, and to say we're not in it for the money is, is not 100% accurate, but we're in it for business. We want to do good business and we want to be around for a while and we want to we contribute to the community and help grow the community. So we've been doing a variety of things to gain customers, um, but word of mouth has actually been pretty, pretty strong for us. Yes, sir. Right. Yep. Thanks to Jimmy, we are streaming live at KSBN TV on YouTube. So Great. The whole wait for the microphone for your questions. The whole web can see me sweat. Awesome. Okay, my, my question is, why not make your service free? Uh, and trust me, I'm always out for looking, uh, you know, as a company, you've got to be profitable at some point, but why not make your service free, get the traction, be known as the number one side to plan weddings, Mm -hmm. um, and then once you have that traction and everyone, you, once you have that brand awareness that when people are getting married, that they think it's like, you know what, we got to go to aisle planner. And once you have that, then start charging nine ninety nine. Why did you, why not make it free now? Y you know, that's a conversation that comes up quite frequently. Um, it's been an argument we've had internally several times, uh, as far as a strategy for engaging customers. The problem I have with free is the expectation of free creates a problem down the road for companies, and we've seen it all too often. Um, a lot of companies that have flamed out just couldn't overcome the freemium model they were locked into. The premiums didn't justify the fees. Our product, in my opinion, and, and I might be biased because we've got a lot in it, is really, really good. And if we give it away for free right now, it's going to be very difficult to charge down the road. Um, and we decided to go with a lower price point, and again, going to that two latte idea. So it's not cost prohibitive. Anyone can plan at any economic level. It's not just for the elite or just for, you know. I think we're giving something of value to people, and I want them to receive that value, but I want them to pay for that value. I'm happier having a smaller audience and treating them better than having a larger audience and treating them worse. And I see a lot of freemium models really do a disservice to their customers because they end up mining their data, they end up exploiting them, they end up sort of cannibalizing the industry they started to cultivate and curate um, to survive. Right now, fortunately for Craigslist and an abundance of furnishings and things I own, I'm able to pay the company, you know, pay for the company on a monthly basis. Um, it's not. Microphone. For the Internet of Things. Okay. I'll ask it. But you know what my question would have been if you were, if your service was free? I would have asked the exact same question. Why not ask? Why not, why not, why not charge for it? But I, I just wanted to ask the question. But thank I, you. I appreciate it. I like being challenged on those things because internally we challenge ourselves on that daily. I'm, I, I'm responsible and beholden. I, I have thousands of bosses right now. Every customer is my boss. So if they're not happy, I can get fired. And the equivalent of me being fired is them leaving our site. So I want to make sure every day I got a job. So we work really hard around the clock to make sure everything we serve them is, is 100%. Good answer. And with that, we are officially out of time. Thank God. <laughs>